All right. So let's talk about acetylcholine synthesis. So acetylcholine is going to be abbreviated ACH. Big A, big C, little h. So that's going to be acetylcholine. What is acetylcholine? Well, it's going to be a neurotransmitter. And specifically, it's going to be a cholinergic cholinergic neurotransmitter. Nergic, wow. I don't even know how I spell this. I'm just going to leave it because it kind of looks monkey. Cholinergic. Uh, what it's going to do is, unlike some other neurotransmitters, uh, acetylcholine is going to be synthesized, then stored, and then released. So let's go over some of the basics of, of uh, acetylcholine synthesis, storage, and release. And then we can talk about some of the different, you know, the different drugs that interact uh, with, with it and some of the problems that can go wrong. So we've got a nerve, and we're approaching the end of the nerve, and here's going to be our nerve terminal, here's our long axon of the nerve, and then here's our synaptic cleft, and then here we go, we've got part of our next nerve, um, so we can continue propagate our, our uh, signal, or this could be our target organ, so target organ, where we're going to mediate our effects of the acetylcholine. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make acetylcholine, and we're going to need to store it, and we're going to need to release it, and then we'll have receptors over here. And I have a video about the different receptors. So you're going to have a whole bunch of different types of receptors. You're going to have nicotinic, you're going to have muscarinic. Um, I'd really recommend watching that video if, if the receptors are a little fuzzy in your mind because it, it goes over the basics. But okay, let's talk about acetylcholine. So we're going to talk about synthesis right now. Synthesis is going to be started out, we're going to have sodium is going to be outside the neuron, uh, the nerve. We're also going to have choline outside the nerve. These two will be brought into the axon via a via a transporter. This is going to be called the choline transporter. Uh, I'm just going to write exporter. That stands for transporter. And it'll be abbreviated CHT. So this will be the CHT uh, transporter. What this will do is we'll bring our sodium in, bring our choline in. So this uh, this channel can be inhibited and we'll go over that in a little bit however uh, let, let's keep going through the synthesis so we've got mitochondria within our cell so our nerve axon is just just a process off of our cell so we've got mitochondria over here and the closer we get down the more concentrated our mitochondria get so you know I drew this out of proportion we're still near the end kind of down here but I needed to start up here for the for the room so we've got mitochondria. In mitochondria, we're going to create some acetyl-CoA. I'm going to acetyl-CoA. So our acetyl-CoA is going to be from the mitochondria. That is going to combine with our choline, and it's going to form our ACH. That was simple. I've gone through a lot of pathways in a lot of my different videos. This is one of the simpler pathways, so that's, that's good. So we're going to take a choline that gets brought into the cell via the CHT uh, enzyme, or the CHT channel. We're going to take an acetyl-CoA synthesized by our mitochondria, and we're going to turn it into an ACH. So how are we going to do that? Well, we'll need another enzyme here. So this enzyme is going to be called our uh, C-H-A-T. So we had our C-H-T, now we do our C-H-A-T. And what that stands for is it's going to stand for choline acetyl transferase, x for -ase. Since kind of short on room, choline acetyl transferase, x for -ase is my shorthand for it. Choline acetyl transferase enzyme is going to take an acetyl CoA. It'll take a choline. It'll combine it. Acetyl choline. Pretty easy. Pretty basic stuff. 
So next what we're going to do is we're going to need to store it. So let's cover the storage. And you know what? I'm going to start a new one. If uh, if we can keep it straight. So we've got our same neuron axon in the terminal. Here's our synaptic cleft. Here's our end. Here's our target organ uh, that that will mediate the effect. So we've got our a C H. We just went from here, oops, to here. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in vesicles. So we're gonna take this and put it in a vesicle. How do we get A C H across this vesicle membrane? Well, we're gonna need V A T. Our V A T uh, enzyme is gonna tr transfer our free A C H into our vesicle and this will uh, this will let us store this ACH for when our action potential is coming down our axon we get to the nerve terminal we'll have stored ACH so as soon as that action potential hits the nerve terminal we'll release that ACH so that's why we have storage and here's our VAT enzyme which will allow us to put it into uh, a vesicle this ACH inside the vesicle will, the whole vesicle will migrate to the end, so it'll uh, migrate to the nerve terminal. And once at the nerve terminal, it will, so here's our vesicle, we'll have another vesicle, why not? Um, we will uh, take a protein that's associated with this, take a molecule that's associated with the nerve, and we'll combine them. So what are we dealing with? Well, let's see if I can draw an arrow. This little marker here that's connected to the vesicle, to this one, it's also over here. It's part of the vesicle. It's called a VAMP. V-A-M-P. So V-A-M-P. These are vesicle associated membrane proteins. Vamps. So these vesicle associated membrane proteins will combine with this. And this is a SNAP. So these SNAPs, so we have vamps and we have SNAPs. What is the difference between these two? Well, this is going to be a synaptosome associated protein. All right. So we've got our SNAPs and our VAMPs. Our SNAPs and our VAMPs, when they get to the end of the nerve terminal here, will combine. And what these will do is they'll form a bond and that'll be our storage. Our vesicles contain our ACH. They're gonna bind to the nerve terminal, so they're, they're gonna pretty much remain latent until we have an action potential via the VAMP and the SNAP association. And thus, we have uh, storage. So we went from synthesis of ACH, now to storage, and now let's go to release. So for release, we've still got our same nerve here, we've got our end organ, alright, and we've got this bound vesicle with this vamp and a snap that are bound together. Now, we've got an action potential that's coming down depolarizing the axon it's going to cause calcium release the calcium is going to uh, bind the calmodulin it's going to cause a fusion of this vesicle and uh, this part of the membrane so the terminal membrane to fuse so this vesicle will fuse with this membrane it's going to release the ACH into the synaptic cleft so the calcium release, the calcium is going to bind calmodulin, which is going to modulate the, uh, the binding of this vesicle into uh, this membrane, causing our acetylcholine release. So thus our ACH is exocytosed, and once in the synaptic cleft, this is where we can go to the degradation. I don't need to make a new degradation. So how do we break down? We have ACH in our membrane. It's going to bind to our receptor 
great. Let's say it doesn't bind to that receptor. We need to get rid of it somehow because we don't want it just freely floating in here because we only want to control it so when our action potential happens, our ACH is in the, mem or in the synaptic cleft. We just don't want free ACH floating around. So we're going to need an enzyme, and that's going to be called acetylcholinesterase. Acetylcholinesterase, also known as A-C-H-E. Acetylcholinesterase. This enzyme will degrade acetylcholine into two products, so it'll break uh, ACH into choline and acetate. Uh, choline and acetate are relatively inert. Um, they won't activate these uh, receptors for ACH, only ACH will. So ACH will get broken down into choline and acetate via the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. All right, so we just talked, let's see if I can get a cool color. Let's do, let's do green. Okay, now we can go back. So I just talked about the synthesis, the storage, the release, and the degradation of acetylcholine. Pretty easy stuff. Now let's talk about some drugs and how drugs interact with here. So we've got uh, the CHT transporter enzyme. This, or not enzyme, transporter. The CHT transporter can be uh, inhibited by hemichromiums, choliniums, hemicholiniums, hemicholiniums. Hemicholiniums will inhibit this transporter, and if you can't get the choline into the cell, you can't synthesize acetylcholine. So that would be a problem. However, also we have another uh, we have another enzyme. So we've got, oops, sorry, my pen is still learning it. We've got another transporter. We've got the VAT transporter. That remember we put the ACH that we've already synthesized into vesicles which can then get stored. This VAT transporter can get inhibited via vesamical. Uh, so that's another drug interaction. Another clinical correlate that we can tie in is going to be, there we go, is going to be botulinum toxin. So Botox, botulinum toxin, also known as Botox, is going to inhibit the fusion of our vesicle and our membrane. So if we can't, if we can't form this fusion between our vesicle and our membrane, then we're not going to be able to release ACH. We'll be able to synthesize it just fine, and we'll be able to store it just fine. However, it won't actually be able to be released. So that's where our botulinum toxin comes in. So we're going to get our paralysis. We're not going to be able to move. It's because our ACH, one of its functions in muscles, is uh, to activate its downstream receptor and cause movement eventually. And Botox toxin prevents that. So it'll uh, prevent the fusion of the vesicle and the membrane, so you can't get exocytosis. And uh, lastly, let's, oh, don't have room, but uh, we'll talk about acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So A, C, H, E, dash I, sub I. That's how I wrote acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. These will inhibit the acetylcholinesterase. Remember, acetylcholinesterase broke down the acetylcholine. So if we inhibit this inhibitor, or this, this enzyme that breaks it down, then we'll have a lot of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft still. We can't break it down, so we'll have a lot of acetylcholine. Uh, a couple of the different acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, we're, we're talking about like physiostigmine, neostigmine, rivastigmine, 
the stigmines are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So uh, this, these are used clinically to diagnose and treat diseases as well. So uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Uh, I covered the basics of uh, acetylcholine synthesis, degradation, storage, etc. Kind of try to tie in a little bit of a clinical correlation to it. Um, I always enjoy getting comments. Please like if you found this video useful and subscribe for more. Thank you very much.